美国最高法院大楼建成于1935年，由美国建筑师卡斯杰尔伯特设计。这座位于首都华盛顿第一街的建筑正门朝西，与国会大厦隔街而望。然而，这座大楼的一些建筑设计细节和构思却远不如最高法院作为美国司法权象征那般为人所熟知。就连最高法院官方网站的简介中也这样写道：“游客往往注意不到最高法大楼东侧的尖顶和廊柱，这里的雕像群由赫蒙·麦克尼尔雕刻，主雕像是伟大的立法先贤摩西、孔子和梭伦。”两侧人像浮雕象征着执法、仁慈、解决国家争端、海事和其他最高法院的职能。为何孔子像会雕刻在美最高法院的门楣之上？中新社东西问近日专访美国汉学家、美国瓦萨学院哲学教授万百安，探寻中国哲学思想曾经对美国的影响，以及为如今的中美关系所带来的启发。The Supreme Court has two pediments. One on the west side, and one on the east side, and so the west side has figures representing abstract concepts. So,、uh, and that's the main entrance to the U.S. Supreme Court building is on the west side. And as you go up, the middle figure on the west side is、uh, Lady Justice. Lady Justice, and then there are other figures representing abstract concepts around her. The east side is the opposite side of the Supreme Court building. People don't see that as often because it's not the main entrance. So if you're just visiting the Supreme Court building, if you have business or if you're a tourist, usually you see the west side. But the east side is very interesting, and as you point out, the central figures on the east side. Are left to right,、uh, Confucius, Moses, and the Greek lawgiver Solon. And the architect who designed the eastern pediment、uh, said, "I picked these three figures to represent the eastern origins of a lot of our civilization." Now. And it's interesting. It's the East pediment, and it's the Eastern origins of our civilization. 在为数不多关于这一建筑细节的中文简介中，有的说法认为孔子是道德的象征，也有人认为他在此是教育的化身。但其实，雕像作者麦克尼尔的设计初衷是将其作为东方文明的一种象征。赫蒙·麦克尼尔是美国二十世纪初著名的雕塑家。他曾设计1916年至1930年流通的25美分硬币，而最高法院东侧门楣的这组雕像群可谓他一生最为重要的作品。这组雕像中，象征希伯来文明的摩西居中，双手各执一册，象征十诫的白色石书，代表东方文明的孔子居左，古希腊政治家和立法先驱梭伦居右。And this was a period called the Enlightenment, when The foundations of modern democracy and modern science、uh, were being laid, and people adopted Confucius as the secular saint of the Western Enlightenment. And this was a very common view. Now, the founding fathers of the United States were part of this Enlightenment movement: Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin. James Madison, Thomas Paine, and John Adams—they all positively commented on Confucius. So, in a way, when the Supreme Court building was designed, and the Supreme Court building, it actually was built fairly late. But even so, the, I think the architect was aware. Of the great influence that Confucius had. 根据美最高法院提供的史料显示，麦克尼尔在写给当时的最高法院建设委员会的信中是这样解释自己的创作初衷的：法律是文明的一个要素，美国的法律自然的继承或派生于以前的文明之中。因此，最高法院大楼的东侧门楣雕像群寓意对源自东方的基本法律和戒律的借鉴。摩西、孔子和梭伦被选为代表三个伟大的文明，形成了这个三角的中心雕像群。
So from a Chinese perspective, it's a little strange to list Confucius as a lawgiver. But the thing is, most Americans, even the ones who admired Confucius, didn't know about the dispute between the legalist school and the Confucian school. So when they wanted to pay respect to Chinese civilization, the only figure they really knew well was Confucius. So they just weren't clear on the distinction between etiquette and ritual versus actual law. But they respected Confucius as a moral figure, and so they picked him to represent one of the foundational traditions in the world. 无论是东方的儒家思想，还是希腊的古典智慧，无疑代表着美国开国元勋在当时的文化视野和兼收并蓄的精神。万百安则对当代美国社会普遍忽视非昂格鲁欧洲传统知识体系的现状表示担忧。他指出，已故的美国最高法院大法官安东尼·斯卡利亚就表达了美国人对中国哲学的一种普遍误解，即将其视为幸运饼干上的神秘格言。但在现实生活中，中国哲学是富有说服力的论证和细致的分析。The attitude of people in the United States. Towards China and toward Chinese culture is very complicated. On the one hand, you have people like Benjamin Franklin and Thomas Jefferson,、uh, and and me. <laughs> I'm not in the same way, obviously, but there are many intellectuals who very much respect the Chinese tradition and love the Chinese people. But you also have many people who look down upon. The Chinese tradition and、uh, and disrespect the Chinese people. So I think that's one source of misunderstanding that Americans don't understand the way in which Chinese people can work together to solve a common problem. Now that China and the U.S. are the two great, in my opinion, the two great superpowers. It's very important for each side to understand the other. Many people in China know at least a little bit about American culture, but still, many Americans are very ignorant about Chinese culture. And as a result of the again the Trump's negative attitude towards China, fewer Americans are studying Chinese. So I, I think that it's very important for the United States to learn more about Chinese culture and Confucianism, because the United States and China are the two great superpowers and need to learn how about each other to get along productively in the future. 万百安研究中国哲学逾三十年，曾翻译《孟子》等多部中国哲学经典。他一直倡导哲学教育应打破以西方为中心的视角，摒弃偏见与误解。当中新社记者问及哪些孔子的智慧可以给予中美关系以启发时，万百安用中文回答说：“己所不欲，勿施于人。”